Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sophie and I would love it if you clicked that big red subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell as well so that you never miss a video. Now I studied not one but three languages at university and people would always ask me what I was planning to do after university and what jobs you could actually do um, with foreign language skills and with a degree in modern foreign languages um, other than being a teacher and a translator so I thought I would make um, this video just talking about well some of the jobs you can do um, using foreign languages now I'm not a careers advisor but I was able to compile a um, list of quite a few jobs that I know you can definitely do with foreign language skills because either I've seen them on LinkedIn or Indeed job sites, something like that, or I know someone personally who is doing those jobs. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So I'm going to start with the most obvious jobs because let's get those ones out of the way. Um, and for those of you who are aware of those jobs and know that you definitely don't want to um, give one of those jobs a go, then feel free to skip um, to the part of the video where I speak about jobs that you may find interesting. Um, I will leave timestamps down below in the description box. So um, yeah, just check those out. Uh, but yeah, I'll start with um, translation um, because that's a very, very popular job. It's considered a kind of typical route for um, people who study languages at university. Um, but people also often get translation confused with like interpretation and stuff. So I thought it would be important still to talk about that because there was a stage where I thought I was going to study translation at university and I thought I wanted to be a translator and when I would tell people that I was going to do this translation masters people would sometimes say to me oh yeah we've got those at the hospital and I was like <laughs> no those are um, interpreters but yeah anyway so there's translation which is you know written translation and then there's interpretation which is more spoken so that's probably what you've seen like happening in the UN um, but I thought it's worth mentioning because as well I think some people sometimes think that you know interpretation is just you know within the UN or the EU um, but it's not um, like I just mentioned a minute ago they have lots of interpreters interpreters um, at hospitals for example um, because you know there are people who can't speak um, the language that is the official language of the country they're living in um, and they need interpreters when they go to hospital um, it's the same with like police police often need interpreters um, I'm sure there's other examples as well but they're ones that I know like there are definitely definitely jobs there for <laughs> interpreters um, and then let's remember as well that like subtitling also kind of comes under translation but I believe it's called like audio visual translation and I don't think like every like translation course prepares you for that so look out for like something that says subtitling or I guess audio audio visual translation which I believe is subtitling subtitling but I'm just assuming that's subtitling but I don't really know so I could be wrong um but yeah I'm not really experienced in the translation area other than just kind of dabbling um a bit of, like translation at uni um but that's it um so yeah that's what you can do with translation and of course you can be a languages teacher in fact I know in the UK modern languages and um, teachers are actually really like sought for and I know when I actually started applying for jobs I was getting recruiters calling me um, asking me even just to be like a teaching assistant because they needed teaching assistants who spoke other languages as well um, so it really is a, a demand um, for, for languages teachers um, obviously that depends whether you want to be a teacher or not but there is a demand for languages teachers and, and you know teaching teaching is kind of like a I guess like a can you call it a sturdy job like there's always jobs for teachers like during the pandemic teachers still had jobs <laughs> so you know could be worth considering um, if you 
would wouldn't mind working in a school and if you want to share your passion for languages um, with others and know that you would be using your language skills because yeah there's always jobs for um, language teachers in secondary schools um, but also remember that you don't just have to teach in the UK um, which brings me on to the next job which is I'm going to say teach in English abroad, but um, whatever your native language is, I'm sure you'll be able to teach it abroad as well. Um, I guess it really depends on the language. Obviously, English is, I'm pretty sure English is taught in every country across the globe. But I b believe French is also taught in every country, um, a lot of them as well. And I'm sure like Spanish is also taught in a lot of countries. Um, I'm sure Mandarin is becoming more popular um, in many countries so yeah it doesn't have to be English if you're watching this video and you're not a native speaker of English but you'd love to share um, you know you'd love to help others learn your native language and you'd want to move abroad that is something um, that you could do of course you could also teach online and stay in your own country or travel the world and be a digital nomad whatever you fancy um there are options out there so i thought that's something um, worth bearing in mind and i know a lot of people who study languages at university do go on to like teach english abroad i know a lot of people who have done that personally through um the british council um so that could be something worth looking into um and yeah you might think well you don't need languages degree to go teach your you know your your mother tongue abroad that's true but then obviously if you move abroad and you're able to speak the language um already that helps you and saying that i know in certain countries if you want to teach english in certain countries through the british council you need to have a certain level in in that language for example i know if you go to spain and teach english you don't need to um speak spanish but if you go to um i think like many countries in latin america i can't remember which one's off the top of my head but i have seen on their website like sometimes you need to have level b2 and um, which is up at intermediate so yeah <laughs> okay so now i'm going to move on to some of the jobs that you don't don't really come to mind and um, when you think of jobs for language speakers because well these jobs you don't have to have language skills to do however some companies need people with specific language skills to do these roles because maybe these companies work um well I'm assuming they work globally on a global scale and maybe they don't have offices overseas they only have one office I guess it depends on the size of the company um, but they might work overseas so they need people who speak different languages um, yeah so there's many many different jobs actually that you can do with foreign language skills and the first one I'm going to start with is customer care because I know for a fact that there are many big companies that I have seen on Indeed and LinkedIn who, um, you know, they work on a global scale, yet their customer care offices are in the UK. Um, for example, I have seen ASOS have a customer care office in Watford um, and, you know, they hire people who speak German, Spanish, all sorts of languages. Booking.com have one in Manchester, um, TripAdvisor have one in Oxford, Lego have one in Slough, um, yeah there's loads of opportunities and I'm pretty sure in other countries as well um, they will have customer care um, offices who you know that work on a global scale. The next job I want to mention is being a recruitment consultant because wow I got contacted by a lot of recruiters about becoming a recruiter because I spoke German. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know what this is going to be like in other countries because I know the UK, well in the UK we have a lot of recruitment agencies and um, for some reason they tend to work globally a lot of them it does depend on the like industry they work in um, but I know for example um, tech recruitment and like life science recruitment and um, often um, they work um, overseas in Germany 
um, so they need people who speak German but I have seen French um, recruitment jobs advertised as well on LinkedIn but yeah I got contacted by a lot of recruiters because I spoke German. Um, I also got contacted by some recruiters just trying to get me to become a recruiter who weren't recruiting me for a specific language speaking role who I said no to because I wanted to use my language skills in um, my role. I knew that was quite important, that, well that was very important to me. Um, but yeah, actually I even got a job offer for a recruitment job but I ended up t turning it down um, to go to um, an interview for the job that I did end up getting. Um, yeah, <laughs> which I believe I mentioned in my last video, but yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling on now. Uh, marketing, um, and I guess within this also social media management, although um, I haven't seen that many social media management jobs posted for language speakers, but I have come across a couple, a few. Um, but yeah, marketing. Um, of course, like I said, there's, you know, a lot of companies who work globally and maybe they need someone to translate stuff on the website into, um, I don't know, if they're gonna launch their products in Spain, translate them into Spanish and, you know, make social media posts in Spanish, stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's another I don't think I really need to say much about marketing. I think we all know what marketing is. And then next we've got a personal assistant. Um, so yeah, obviously the many personal assistant jobs where you don't need to speak a specific language, um, but maybe you're going to be a personal assistant for somebody who doesn't speak English as their first language, um, or you're just going to be a personal assistant for someone who travels a lot um, to a specific country so then it's beneficial for them to have a personal assistant who can speak that language so that they can like book all their travel for them and you know organize business meetings for them etc etc um whatever i don't know um i have seen that you kind of need a bit of a experience usually to get into a personal assistance role um just from what i've seen because i literally like looked into pretty much every role that i saw that you know i knew i could do with foreign language skills um because when i first left finished university i didn't know what i wanted to do so i looked into basically everything to see if it's something that i thought i could do or not because i was like i'm not gonna you know say that i <laughs> Discard, discard, oh, I can't speak English, I can't think of the word, but I'm not going to not consider an opportunity until I know exactly what it involves. Yeah, I wasn't going to not consider any specific job until I knew what that job entailed. Yes. <laughs> this next job is actually one that um, someone suggested I look into, and that's working like within the intelligence office, and I guess with that, like any kind of government based role of course not every government based role is going to you know require that you speak another language um, as long as you speak the language that is spoken in the country that you want to work in generally that will be fine but at the same time some roles they're going to advertise for people who speak a specific language because you know it's quite important working within the government because governments have to communicate with other governments and I don't even know exactly what they do in the intelligence office. I think I saw on the website and stuff sometimes they have to have people like listening to tapes and like translating stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't know, go look into it again, not a careers advisor. And the next industry that you can work in potentially using your foreign language skills is the events industry. So you can work within event management or event sales. Um, I'm currently working within event sales. I literally started the job like two weeks ago. I literally just finished my second week, yeah, like on Friday and we're currently on Sunday as I'm filming this. So yeah, and the job I'm doing, like it was advertised as a Spanish speaking role. I haven't spoken much Spanish yet, but that's probably mainly because I was training for the first week um but yeah like the event I'm working on takes place in Spain so being able to speak Spanish is quite important and basically what I do is 
you know, if I'm keeping it short, I invite people to the event. Um, short and sweet, I find people that I think would be interested in attending to the event and I just reach out to them and I see whether or not they would. Um, basically, that's what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, there's obviously quite a lot of jobs within like event management uh, um, in the events industry that require you to speak a foreign language or they might prefer that you speak a foreign language because um, you know many of these events are quite global they're inviting people from all over the place so um, the event that I'm working on for example takes place in Spain but um, there's going to be people attending from like all over Europe and I'm sure there'll be pe some people from outside of Europe as well but like mainly Europe I believe um, so yeah if these events are quite global and can help to speak um, another language um, but of course you don't always need to speak a foreign language to work in the events industry like with many of these roles I believe the majority of people in my office currently don't speak another language I think it really depends on what event you work on because if, you know the company I work for have many different events um, and I imagine many events companies are like that they have many different events so I guess depending on what event you work on and what type of event will depend on whether you need to speak a foreign language or not and I guess I kind of just mentioned it when I was talking about the events industry but um, there are a lot of sales based jobs for um, speakers of foreign languages um, I guess it depends on who you're selling stuff to and what type of stuff you're selling what languages you need to speak but yeah you can work in sales if that's something that you think you would be good at and um, would like to do and I guess you would be using your languages a lot in sales because you know you might be having phone calls with people so you'd actually be like speaking to people rather than just like sending out emails and stuff um, so yeah <laughs> And I guess I kind of just mentioned it when I was talking about the events industry, but um, there are a lot of sales based jobs for um, speakers of foreign languages. Um, I guess it depends on who you're selling stuff to and what type of stuff you're selling, what languages you need to speak. But yeah, you can work in sales if that's something that you think you would be good at and um, would like to do. And I guess you would be using your languages a lot in sales because, you know, you might be having phone calls with people. So you'd actually be like speaking to people rather than just like sending out emails and stuff. Um, so yeah and then lastly I want to mention charity jobs I know that's not like a specific role um, because you know there's many different roles within different charities but I'm sure as you're aware many charities kind of work overseas have different projects overseas that they work on and if they're working overseas on different projects they're probably going to need um, speakers of foreign languages yeah foreign language speakers to work on those projects so that was something worth looking into and there are like different websites like job boards that just for charity jobs and I guess if you did end up getting a charity job it would be quite rewarding and maybe if you are someone who likes doing stuff for charity a lot um, and getting involved in like volunteering and fundraising and stuff like that that could be something that you'd be interested in so i was just about to film the outro and then i remembered that some admin jobs will require you to speak um a foreign language um again basically just any job some companies would work like overseas and need people who speak a different language so yeah i guess i don't really know exactly what people do in admin other than like sending emails and going through files and I don't really know. Oh, I just remembered as well that you can be a data analyst sometimes with language skills. That's one that I remember seeing post on LinkedIn quite a few times. Um, so yeah, you can really do anything. You can be like a video moderator as well. Like I think I saw that for TikTok and one of my friends sent it to me um, because obviously like people from all around the world post videos on TikTok um, and TikTok needs someone to sit there and basically go watch these videos and make sure that you know there isn't anything up on TikTok that goes against their um, guidelines. I feel like you could see a lot of nasty stuff that you don't want to see in a job like that though and um, that could be like quite 
haunting and mess with your mental health. I don't know though. Again, I'm not a careers advisor. Um, I don't want to put you off that job. Um, so I would say like with like I've I've said probably a million times in these videos, like in this video already, and just do your own research. Um, but yeah, there's so many jobs, so, 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 so many jobs you can do with foreign language skills. So don't just think you have to be a teacher or you have to be um, a translator or just give up on your dream of using your languages in your job. I mean, you anyway, I'm rambling on. It's time for me to end this video. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's many other jobs out there. So if you can think of any jobs um, that you think people watching this video may be interested in, then leave them down below in the comment section. But yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling on now. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe so you see more videos from me in the future. And I promise this will be the last video I make about jobs and careers advice and stuff like that. So, yeah. Bye! <laughs>